Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello! My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about the differences and similarities between a live and studio situation. Recently in the UK, live shows and gigs have just started up again, which is what has really inspired this video. So if you're interested in this and want to learn a bit more, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kissed me in the rain. I was playing a gig the other day for the first time in the best part of two years. And it really got me thinking how over the past two years, I've been experiencing music differently. I've not been in a pub or at a wedding with a crowd in front of me singing and dancing along. I've been in a studio environment creating music whilst taking my time in a somewhat isolated environment. And although I use a lot of the same effects and principles and techniques, some are used differently, which I thought was worth discussing. When thinking about it, there were five main differences between a live and studio situation that were pretty clear to me. The first is game staging. Now, in most live situations, we're probably using an analog desk, unless you or the sound engineer has invested a lot of money in their gear and has bought a digital desk, which I suppose nowadays we're seeing more and more. But on an analog desk, you want to be aiming for an input gain of zero dB. Whereas in a studio or on a digital desk, you want to be aiming for minus 12 dB. And now this is both for the same reason, we want to avoid clipping. However, these numbers are just ever so slightly different. The second difference is effects, like delays and reverbs. Now in a live situation, you're likely to get natural reverbs from the space you're playing in or the room you're in. And so actually when you're mixing, you may not want to put as much reverb or delay on say the vocal or the instrument as you would in a studio situation because you don't have that space in the mix due to the natural reverb. And if you do add this effect onto the vocal or instrument, your mix is likely to sound a lot muddier. But in a studio, you can afford to put long reverbs and delays on your vocal or instrument because you do have that space. The third difference is panning. Now this is really important in a live situation. Say you're playing a very, very big venue and you pan the guitar hard left. Only the left hand side of the audience is going to be able to hear the guitar, which is not ideal at all. However, in a studio situation, we use panning to create a really wide, full sounding mix. And so we can afford to pan the guitar hard left because we want to create that larger stereo image. And so panning is very, very different in a live and studio situation. The fourth difference is microphones. Now, I think the biggest difference between a live and studio situation is the type of microphone we'd choose to use. In a live situation for vocals or instruments or an amp, you'd probably choose to use a dynamic microphone, such as a Shure SM57 or SM58. And this is because they're less sensitive, so there's less chance of feedback and mic bleed from other sounds on stage. However, in a studio situation, your sounds are much more likely to be a lot more isolated. And so we can afford to use condenser microphones, which pick up all the tiny details and subtleties of a sound to get us a crisper, more detailed recording. I think that it may also be important to add, just as a quick side note, that in a live situation, guitar and bass amps may be loud enough on their own to not need a microphone at all. And the fifth difference is probably the biggest difference of them all. And that's that there are no second chances in a live situation. You can't overdub the vocals. You can't go back and change that one note in that solo that you got wrong. And you can't start all over again. What you play is what the audience hears. And there's no going back from that. And I think as a performer and artist, this can be hard to accept because you want everything to be perfect. You want to show yourself off to the best of your abilities. But there's always going to be a time when you make a mistake. And actually, I think that that's one of the joys of live music. 
Now let's talk about some of the similarities. The actual effects we use are exactly the same. They're most likely to have exactly the same parameters and may even look the same in both a live and studio situation. We just use them ever so slightly differently. For example, in a studio situation, you may choose to EQ a vocal to have more higher frequencies, to add a bit of airiness and clarity to the vocal. However, in a live situation, this may make the vocal sound really harsh and could even cause problems with some feedback. And so you may choose to not boost those high frequencies. So they work in the same way, we just use them slightly differently. Another similarity between the two situations is the preparation you need to do beforehand. If you're a vocalist, you need to make sure you've warmed your voice up. If you're a guitarist or a bassist, you need to make sure your instrument's in tuned and that you have an extra set of strings, and so on. We need to make sure that we know what we're playing or what we're singing, the chords, the tune, the structure of the song, and all that jazz too. And this will make your live shows seem very, very professional and also ensure that you make the very most of your studio time. And the third and final similarity is the monitor mixes we have. In a live situation, I'm talking about the monitor mix that only the performers can hear on stage as they're singing or playing. And in the studio, I'm talking about the mix that the performer or the singer hears through a pair of headphones when they're recording. And this is really, really important that we get it right for each individual. Some people will prefer to have more vocals in their mixes, some maybe more drums. It's completely up to them. But getting this right means that the performer or the singer will give their very best on stage or in the studio and will get the best end result. So those are the differences and similarities that I've thought of between a live and studio situation. If you can think of any more, do share down in the comments below. I think that in general, there are a lot of differences between playing live and playing in a studio. However, a lot of the disciplines and techniques are very similar, which is why doing live sound gives you a good foundation in audio engineering or producing, and vice versa. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.